welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here, and welcome to video two of my uh, mini bandsaw build. These two uh, large pieces of six inch uh, aluminum are going to be the two main wheels for uh, the uh, bandsaw. Uh, the thicker one there is going to be uh, the one that's going to have the drive belt on it, the V belt. And the uh, thinner one that I set off to the side there is going to be the top wheel, which will be using the tensioning. And this piece here is what's left over from the uh, belt sander build. And I thought what well, <laughs> I thought what I would do here is uh, cut it up and use it to make an arbor to hold the pieces in place. And I thought I'd use the um, parting tool on the lathe to do that. I gave up after a short while because it was taking way too long, and also it wasn't going straight, so I just cut it off. And then it doesn't take too much to face it. So this is going to be me uh, initially uh, forming the arbor. Now, I should tell you as we go along here, none of this is actually ever going to be used, as it turns out, for uh, the bandsaw, because the arbor idea was just a bad idea. I think I originally got it in my head when I was doing the original measuring for uh, whether or not, like, I wanted to figure out what would fit on the lathe, you remember from, vid uh, from video one. So I figured, well, the arbor were kind of cool there, so I figured I'd make an arbor and then attach uh, the larger pucks to that and basically go from there and uh, that way I can flip things around and so on and so forth. It was a bad idea but uh, you know I don't want to be one of these channels that just uh, shows you all the stuff that works so uh, uh, this video is going to be all about stuff that doesn't work at all. So this is me machining down um, what was left over from that other puck, the three inch puck, and I turn it down. I want to leave it still pretty chunky because uh, I wanted a good firm grip in the, uh, the chuck. I needed enough room for the screws to go by and then I flipped it around here and what I'm going to do now is face this side so it's all turning nice and true and then I'm going to drill a hole through the middle of it and uh, finish up the edges and then uh, what we're going to do is go on from here and uh, I'm going to put in uh, four quarter inch holes and those quarter inch holes will be attached to uh, whatever piece I want to hold with this thing. So here it is. It's uh, pretty much finished now. I still have to, a little bit more work to do on it but I wanted to see that's uh, that's the whole idea here. I'm going to uh, um, I'll try and be able to attach this to it and obviously I'm going to have to countersink holes and so on and so forth. I mean it's going to be an awful lot of extra work but for some reason like I said you get an idea stuck in your head and if you're anything like me, once an idea is in your head and you're stubborn as, you know, <laughs> as stubborn gets, uh, you try and uh, make it work. I should have clued in when I was, uh, well, a few seconds ago, when I was uh, putting this uh, arbor on top of the, uh, the raw piece. It was very out of true, because uh, apparently whenever it got cut, and I think it was also an end piece, uh, it was just not even remotely straight. But I figured what I'd do is uh, I could straighten it out. <laughs> uh, well, anyway, well, as a go cool along, we'll see how bad an idea that was. So here what I'm doing is I'm putting the four holes in. I uh, have it all straightened up. I, uh, I use a little pieces of plywood now instead of uh, plastic or whatever else just to uh, keep the, uh, uh, the aluminum from being scratched so I can hold it really tightly. And then, as you can see, I'm still using the uh, uh, lun extruded aluminum uh, as my... Uh, as my parallel, but these holes actually don't really need to be perfectly straight because each piece that I, well here you go, completely done now, uh, I will just be drilling holes uh, into it. So here we are back here, I'm gonna put it back in place yet again, and I can still feel a little bit of wiggle in here. I'm trying to figure out which side would be best, and uh, <laughs> like I said, at this point in time I should have clued in that this is just going to be way too much work. I should have just reversed the jaws on my three jaw chuck and just thrown the whole thing in. Um, but, like I said, some days you're just stubborn. So here I am. I'm going to set it where I want to place it. I want to center it. And I thought once uh, it's attached to the arbor and spinning in the lathe, I can actually do the final truing up on the lathe. Uh, but again, what I hadn't considered is uh, normally when I do work on the lathe and I have a round object like this and I'm spinning it, uh, this parallels of the sides <laughs> on a round extruded object are much more true than the sides of to cut sides like these ends here and I thought well I should be able to do it and but 
anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. So here I am, I'm going to set it up, uh, and I'm going to um, measure it properly and get it all uh, done, and I'm going to drill through here. Uh, at this point here, I'm just making sure that the uh, slide on the uh, milling machine is long enough for me to get around all the setups, and then I'm just going to drill, uh, first I'm just going to not drill through all the way, all I'm going to do here is just uh, touch through and make sure that the, I mark where all the holes are going to go, and then I'll remove the arbor and all the braces and stuff, and then I'll do the finishing drilling then. But again, like I said, I don't, you can't really see it here, but a little later on when I try to, uh, well, when I finally give up on this idea and I start doing the, uh, the, the real facing, uh, these sides are actually considerably out of alignment. It might be just the fact that it's a six inch puck and maybe that's just the reason that it's uh, hard for them to cut it straight enough, but uh, you'll see as I, I do it along. What I've done is I set up my... Um, uh, cutting tool on the lathe uh, slightly below center so that way as I uh, trip up the face there will be a little knobby bit left in the middle. You'll probably notice it in a couple of the videos. Uh, that's done on purpose so that uh, well I can see exactly how it truly were. And you get up with a fairly uh, substantial little nub there in the end. Uh, so here I'm just drilling through all the way. Um, and now these holes have to be the, matched up to the holes that were Obviously the original holes as well. Uh, I think I got the yeah I think I got the mixed up the first time. But here we are putting them in, and it goes all the way through. What we're gonna do now is uh, flip that over. Actually, I noticed the see one of the screws is, or bolts is a little short there. It's not because it's short. It's uh, actually bent. So I had to pop that one out and put another one in. Um, but yeah, it's uh, all set to put in the lathe now, and I get to see. Well, this has been what two uh, two hours and a bit of work. And now I get to see <laughs> how well it's going to work. Uh, this one, there you go, I'm going to pull that one out and put a real one in. Um, yeah, it's one of those weird things. Like I said, you just sort of get an idea stuck in your head. And you know, I was going along, I was like, well, no, I still have to countersink all these on both sides. And I have to be able to flip it back and forth. And, uh, I don't know, just, just, just call it a massive brain fart and be done with. Alright, here we are, finally in the lathe. And uh, yeah, that is just horrible. You can see it bouncing up and down. And I figure, well, maybe I put it in wrong. No. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to bring the cutting tool just to the edge. Just touch it. And then normally you might have a little spot that size that's unmachined uh, when you do this. But, <laughs> God, that's just horrible. So here I am. I'm going to switch the... Jaws around and uh, we'll do this the proper way. But again, you know, like, like I said, it was a very stubborn day I was having, so I was sitting here and I, I'll put the teeth in myself. Uh, it's easy when you have uh, them the other way around, but this way is like, wait a minute, my fingers aren't long enough to reach them all at the same time, so I kept trying and kept trying, and <laughs> you gotta get it a certain sequence and you can see. Uh, anyway, here. After four tries, I finally got my wife to come down and help me. Uh, that's her hand there. I didn't grow another one. And there we go. We got the jaw chucks in the right way. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it the other way around. And give it a spin. After we get it all set up properly. And we will see it spin. Oh yeah, also what I'm going to do here is... Uh, hey, uh, look at how much it's wobbling. That's just sad. I'm going to just touch the... Uh, the uh, bit to the uh, the outside, yeah. and here we go. I can do a comparison. This is the uh, setting in the arbor. That's the the small amount that got um, that got cleaned when I, I turned on the lathe. And I'm going to flip it over and show you the other side. And that is how much <laughs> got machined with the uh, other side. So obviously, it is massively out of true anyway. So what I'm going to need to do is set it up in uh, the lathe properly and then uh, true up one of the faces and work from there. There you go, you see, that's how much out of true it is. That's actually really quite sad. But fortunately these pucks are really quite large. So what I've done here now is I've set it up and what I've done is I have um, paralleled it to the spin, like the the long axis, of well, the long axis is kind of a short buck, but the uh, parallel sides are now uh, set properly in the chuck and what I'm doing is I'm going to mill this down until I finally have a nice straight piece. And then because, I, like I said, I was very stubborn this day. 
uh, once I've done this, I plan on f switching it around, reattaching the arbor, and saying, hey, it should be a lot more in true now. Oh, God, I tell you. One of, the, one of those days I probably should have just not bothered and just, uh, you know, done something else. I've had how many passes here so far, and it still hasn't even touched the center of it. That's actually quite quite amazing. I don't think I've ever had a piece that uh, has... Oh, there we go. Finally getting to the point where we're you know, at least touching the middle. and uh, But it still has a long way to go, I think. Oh, I figure I'll just take another little bit off. But... I'm going to turn the lathe off here in a second, and you're going to see uh, just how much there is left to go. There you go, a whole section still hasn't been touched. So yeah, I'm going to keep this up for a little bit longer. Uh, so anyway, I should probably apologize to you guys uh, for uh, <laughs> inflicting this video on you. But I didn't really want to uh, just show you uh, how everything always works perfectly and all that sort of crap. Uh, see the nub's getting quite big now. Oh, I think a piece fell off even. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I want to show you actual uh, how I actually do the machining process. And sometimes you just come up with dumb ideas, and uh, this is it. This is my dumb idea. So I'm putting it back together, and I'm going to tighten it all down, and I'm going to put it in the lathe, and I say, all right, it's straightened up now, so, and look at that. It's better, but I figured I'd have to do this process what, two, three more times minimum to get it all straight and running proper, and then I still have to uh, uh, countersink all the holes and everything, and I said, no, that's... I've, <laughs> my stubbornness ran out at this point and I said that enough is enough and next video you'll see me doing this properly uh, thanks for watching if you like this style of video please like or subscribe and in video 3 I will be doing the actual machining for these wheels and uh, we'll see you then